The Wagner Group, uh, a military contractor owned by an oligarch with close ties to Russia's President Putin, is increasingly operating in Libya and Sudan. With us now is Farhad Polat from the University of Exeter. I want to ask you a little bit um, about this group, first of all, uh, one of the most vicious private armies in the world. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, it's definitely it is, and it's arguably the the world's most effective uh, mercenary army, reported to created, funded, and controlled by the Kremlin and Wagner fighters, uh, has been operating in several countries and uh, of the supporting several offensive that we have seen in Libya in 2019, and uh, mainly they guarding energy resources and some military bases. And Wagner provides a great opportunity for Russia because it helps to fulfill its economic and uh, political interest in the countries they involve. And also, at the same time, gives plausible uh, deniability because, uh, in other words, Russia could say, uh, I'm not interfering any countries uh, like in Libya or Sudan. And because Wagner provides the, such deniability for Russia. In so far, mercenaries and in other kinds of irregular fighters like foreign fighters uh, serves the country's uh, foreign uh, interest and they represent ongoing of militarization in several countries like in Libya, in Sudan, and according to United Nations reports, and it, since 2018, uh, Wagner has like around 2,000 foreign fighters reported that some of those fighters left the country in order to support the operation in Ukraine, but still they have presence in, in the country. Yeah, what, what are they doing exactly in Libya, for example? I mean, uh, Libya's case is a bit, uh, you know, over the past uh, few years and uh, on the unstable security situation, in Libya has been exacerbated by a continued failure of rival parties to uh, reconcile and the polarization in Libyan politics, the following incapacity to have a, a professional army has created security vacuum. And especially since 2011, but increased into uh, since 2014, when Libyan's uh, factions, they divided the country between East and West, which has provided great opportunity for Russia. Russia moved as a uh, you know, uh, in Libya, because uh, the security vacuum allowed Wagner groups to support, especially the, the eastern part of the country, Halifa Haftar's forces, who controls east and southeast of uh, the country. And, uh, you know, uh, in 2022, uh, in 2020, and uh, reportedly, uh, some Wagner fighters, and uh, they seized some of the oil uh, facilities in Libya, and even the ports. So they operate in Libya in, in the, in the, in the, in the, on, on the behalf of uh, Russia uh, reportedly, and they also, you know, help uh, the, the militia groups in, in Libya, and they have heavy arms and artillery and so on. So they are very well equipped, and this is uh, something the locals cannot fight, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, given that Libya has a strategic value, and uh, in part so due to uh, its location on the Eastern Mediterranean Sea, hosting several military bases like El Batia, uh, Mitiga, linking air and sea roads. So, and also Libya is an oil-rich country. So, since 2015, Russia has been ramping up its engagement. Firstly, it wants to present its economic interest in the country, and also it's a great opportunity for them to. Uh, you know, have a presence in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea because Libya also is a gateway to uh, Africa and has a strategic location, has resources. So that makes, uh, you know, uh, its main driver for Wagner, its economy, but also Wagner serves for Russians for uh, rich in, in Libya in terms of helping uh, those militia groups, especially... Right. Haftar's forces. Uh, for Hatbalat, thank you very much.